Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today for our next episode of Mixed Messages with Jeff Bogue. My name is Joe Caruso, and I'll be your host as we dig into today's topic. Well, it seems from news sources to comedians, friends to advertisements, it seems everyone has an idea of how we should think, live, and make decisions. And when even the experts sound convincing, but they disagree, how can we cut through the noise? How do we sift through all the information overload and choose what governs our lives? Well, our leadership here at Grace has been processing these things and praying for all of us, so we want to offer a resource to navigate some of the day's most pressing topics and questions. Jeff? Joe? Como estas? Ah, tiente tu hermanos? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife speaks like four languages, I and I just I, love I that. I can't even speak English. I'm, I'm terrible <laughs> at it. I love that you tried. I almost said oh. Tudabain, but I was like, I know that one's Portuguese, so I'm, ter- <laughs> I'm horrible. Ah, you speak the languages. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's very, very good. Well, I hope you're doing well today. Good. Thank you. I am. I'm really glad <laughs> to hear that. you are, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been fun. Um, so I was uh, really glad that this is Mixed Messages with Jeff Bogue today because right before we started recording this, I was like, this person totally said this and thought it was a passage in Scripture, and lo and behold, it's a passage of Scripture, and I was the one that was yeah. totally off base. And what he was thinking of was a Lord of the Rings quote. Yeah, I was totally He's like, that's not in the Bible. I'm like, are you, uh, what are you thinking of? Because yeah, I'm was thinking, thinking of the Bible. Yeah, <laughs> I was totally picturing the Gandalf quote, not the Bible quote, and got those things reversed. But anyway. That's okay, Joe. I'm sure you have other skills in life. <laughs> I, I got to find them. <laughs> oh, very, very good. Well, um, so... Jeff, I've had a couple of questions swirling around, and uh, a version of this question honestly has been asked to me over the years, just why should we care about these things? But in light of all that's happening in our world right now, things like Taliban takeover in Afghanistan and extreme persecution of Christians, um, there's things like civil unrest, earthquakes, and rising poverty in Haiti. There are crises all around the world, creating refugees and and so many other things. We could go on and on and on. Um, Why should I, why should we care about what's happening in these other countries? Um, And and how would Jesus ask us to do that if we're even supposed to? Yeah, it's it's a great question um, for a bunch of reasons. Uh, One one reason why we we should care because Christ wants us to care is the super duper simple answer, and I'll elaborate that on a in a minute. But uh, when I when I think about all that's happening in the world, sometimes it's actually hard to care. Yep. Uh, We live in an information age, and so the needs of the world are before us in ways that they, like literally nobody, no other people group has ever had this much access to to understanding those needs. And then they're in front of us also like in this micro way. And so like we, we know about big national things like uh, Afghanistan, which just kind of breaks my heart what's happening there. And then Haiti would like break my heart. And we know and love so many people personally and yeah. as a church in Haiti. Um, but then you could take it to drug cartels in Mexico Absolutely. and you could go to the the slums of Brazil and uh, oppression in India, in China, starvation in North Korea, yeah. uh, injustices in the United States of America. You, you see what I'm saying? Like it, it, it is such a flood that I know sometimes I feel like for my own sanity, I have to turn the news off. I, I'm like, I, I can't even process it all. Yeah. And, and then if you're a Christ follower, I think within us, we feel a, um, a responsibility, and I would even say a spiritual instinct. Hmm. The love of Christ compels us to care about these things and you don't even know where to start and, and you don't even know what to do. So I, I just kind of want to say that out the gate. Like, um, th- I'm sure that this question, that some of our, our listeners are like, I'm really glad they're going to talk about Haiti and Afghanistan. It's kind of on the front page right now. And then I'm sure that there's another side of, of our brain that's like, oh, they're going to talk about another crisis. <laughs> because it just never goes away and and I get that and so it's it's a burden that we bear and um I think it's hard I think it's important not to become numb yep 
Um, and I also don't think that uh, God calls every believer to focus on everything all the time. And so I think there's certain things that he, he ties our hearts to. So as a pre-qualifier <laughs> to, my, to my answer, the, the reason that we would, we would care about these things is uh, I would kind of categorize it into a few different arenas. Uh, one is that when Jesus told us to pray, one of the things that he said to pray was that, that um, it would be on earth like it is in heaven. Yeah. And that certainly most definitively means spiritually, and it also most definitively means blessing. And, and by blessing, I don't mean prosperity gospel stuff. Uh, things like mercy, grace, forgiveness, uh, ownership, compassion, right? Uh, things that would be hallmarks of heaven, that would be defined fruits of the Spirit that the Holy Spirit of God is producing within us, those things playing out for the righteous and the unrighteous Mm -hmm. is part of how we uh, express the love of God to brothers and sisters and how we illustrate the love of God even for a lost world. And so that's that's one reason why we care, um, because um, uh, we want people to know who Christ is actually like in that there is evil and there is Christ and the kingdom of God is like this. It's not like the Taliban. Uh, That's one kind of vein that would motivate us. Another vein to motivate us is the Apostle Paul when he's talking about, he's actually talking specifically about giving and he says, I want there to be equality. Mm. And when he says equality, he does not mean socialism. and he's not talking about shared finances. He's talking in terms of God has blessed you. And if God has blessed you and there's another part of his family that for whatever his divine reasons are, which are mysterious, uh, that part of the family does not have the same material support that you do God wants equality. I often say, like, if you ate today, let's try to make sure that believers across the world eat today. If you had access to justice today, let's try to make sure that believers in other parts of the world. If you had shelter, if you had safety, right? So when you think about, like, Haiti as a present example, and, and we're acknowledging that the examples could go on and on. So we picked Afghanistan and Haiti, kind of front page stuff. Uh, there's an earthquake. Last I saw was at about 1,900 mm-hmm. dead and many thousands displaced. So if a tragedy happened in my family and you could help me materialistically to alleviate my pain or my crisis, Paul says, I would want there to be equality. Like yeah. that would be a good thing to, to do, something wants us to do. And so there's time, it's, it's actually funny, rarely is money the answer to problems. Right. And then there's times that it actually is. <laughs> you know, like food, shelter, clothing, uh, those are material things. And like that is what somebody needs in yep. that that moment. So I would put it in in that phrase. So kind of this, on earth as it is in heaven, uh, I want equality, you know, as a body of Christ, let's care for each other. It's, it's kind of tied to loving your neighbor as yourself. And then, and then the other uh, aspect of it would be tied a little bit more to like persecution. So think of what's happening in Afghanistan. We're getting, um, when I say we, I mean the Western church is getting communications from Afghan pastors, from missionaries, from Christians, that the persecution from the Taliban is like near and present and happening, right? Yeah. So I would turn to a passage like Hebrews thirteen three, uh, where the writer says, continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourself were suffering. And so that vein is a body of Christ vein. Yep. So the hand does not say to the toe, the pain you're experiencing is your problem. The hand 
uses the ability of the of the hand to relieve suffering of the toe if it's possible to do that. So when when the Bible talks about the body of Christ, every believer is a part of the body of Christ. The Bible would talk about that on a local level. So Grace Church is a local presentation of the body of Christ. And so we would talk about that like amongst ourselves. But then the the Bible would also talk about the body of Christ in a global level mm-hmm. where every believer that's presently on the planet, I am a part of them and they are a part of me. And that's part of what the writer is directing here in Hebrews. He's like, yeah, if they're in prison, you're there, man. If they're suffering, you're suffering. And then I'm loving a neighbor as I would myself. Like if I was in prison, what would I want done for me if I was suffering? And then sometimes Afghanistan is an example where um, money, we couldn't even get it to them. Uh, Protection is the problem. I can't go and get you. And so what I would want to know is that you're praying like desperately and passionately for me that God would intervene because that's what the scripture would direct Mm -hmm. us to do. And it's all I can do right now, you know, and uh, you think about like North Korea, these other very, very oppressed places where the Christians would be persecuted. I can't run in there, um, but I, I can't. I would do what I can, and that's probably pray right now. So when I say that's like what, when I say like the, the quick answer is because Jesus has won us to, that's the kind of things. It's not an all-inclusive list, and so our listeners probably have even better ideas or more insights on that. But it's it's kind of those pathways that we would be thinking of as believers. Yeah, I'm picking up a couple things there. One, we're ambassadors to the world like so we're helping bring god's kingdom to bear however wherever spiritually and physically uh, to all these places and then we're also members of the body you know this isn't just something that's happening around the world these are this is our extended family exactly that's going through this jeff um as we think through these things like you mentioned like the church might be persecuted or believers might be persecuted and like you said not just in afghanistan but all around the world is that something that, like, did God forget about them? Like, biblically speaking, what's happening oftentimes when believers are being persecuted? Um, the Bible talks a lot about this, and, and what, the, what Jesus says is they're being blessed. Now, <laughs> now, I know for us, we're especially as North Americans, anything that involves suffering, pain, or inconvenience, we don't think of as blessing at all. Right. So this is one one of these thing. This is one of these areas in Scripture that we have to be very very spiritually minded to make it make sense. Um, they're being persecuted because God is allowing them to uh, suffer in His name, and through that allowance, allowing them to represent or model what Christ did mm-hmm. for us. Uh, when the church of Jesus is persecuted, as you look back and you look at a, a, a biblically historic pattern, the gospel has always ignited and spread more rapidly. Hmm. Now, this, I, I will say, for me as a North American and for probably the majority of people that would listen to us, that is a very foreign thought. Hmm. Because we have been taught that blessing is comfort and abundance. So we think that way. I think that way, mm-hmm. right? I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm like, uh, God's blessed me. Look at my house. I feel so blessed. If I was suddenly homeless, I wouldn't say, God bless me. Look at the persecution I get to endure. Right. Like, I would struggle deeply with that. So, when God allows persecution, he's not being cruel uh, and he's not punishing necessarily. Uh, he, he, the, Jesus says, you will be persecuted and when you're persecuted for righteousness, you are blessed for that. You are being persecuted because of me. 
the way that the way that we would have to think about this in like an earthly context is um, uh, the way that we would probably think about coaching or somebody pushing us. I remember when I was in uh, high school, I played a little JV baseball in high school, <laughs> and uh, I remember being at uh, baseball practice one day, and I was a pitcher. I could. Th- for a kid, I, I am no athletic phenom by any stretch. But <laughs> we know. No, yeah, <laughs> I know. I probably didn't have to disclaim that. But uh, but for a kid, I could throw the ball hard, and I threw. I could throw sidearm, which for a kid in high school is a thing, right? And so I remember one time being at baseball practice, and uh, we had these five-gallon buckets of baseballs, and we would often throw into a net, and the coach would have four or five of us doing that. Um, And I was doing that off of an indoor mound and throwing and throwing and throwing, and um, the coach released the other guys doing it, but he made me keep doing it. Hmm. And he made me work on my form and work on my form and work on my form. And I, I, I uh, remember my arm aching, and I remember being tired, and I remember being frustrated. And, and then I remember looking at the coach and saying, why are you punishing me? Like, you kept me after practice. You've worked me to the bone. I'm trying to please you. Uh, I could throw the ball hard. I couldn't throw strikes. And by the way, never did learn how to throw strikes. Like I never knew where the ball was going to go. And I remember him looking at me, and he he looked at me. He said, "I'm not punishing you." And he said, "I'll never forget this. I was a freshman at, when I played JV baseball." Um, and he looked at me, and he said, "If you could throw a strike, you could probably play in college." Hmm. So he was he he wasn't hurting me. He was bringing out something in me that I was not able or willing to bring out of myself, right? And that's persecution. And if you're not spiritually minded, it's impossible to do the math. And all the prosperity gospel heresy that is all around evangelical Christianity Christianity, and even other forms of Christianity where the mark of God's goodness is that you get what you want Mm -hmm. and nothing bad happens to you and your sicknesses are healed and the people you love don't die. You cannot find that in the Bible. It's not there. What my coach was saying to me is if you could endure these light and momentary struggles— There is a reward for you. And in my immaturity, I didn't know that there was a reward. I didn't know that there was a cost to that uh, reward. And I didn't value it, right? Because I played JV baseball my freshman year. I never (laughs) could throw a shot. I never did the work. I'm sure, I bet you my coach could have helped me get a college scholarship. But I didn't care about a college scholarship. Yeah. Right? And pers- you have to think about persecution in that way. Um, the Bible would teach that those who are martyred are rewarded differently in heaven. But if I think that the God's goal and work for my life is all earthly, I don't care about heaven. I don't care about that reward. I want out of this pain now. Right now, listen, everybody who's listening, listen, listen to me right now. Right, <laughs> this is coming from a guy that doesn't want to be persecuted. <laughs> so I am not trying to be self righteous. I'm I'm trying to actually confess that one of the reasons maybe why God hasn't uh, asked me to undergo through persecution is because I'm too much of a wimp. Um, now I think it's coming across the world. Uh, but but God is doing something spiritual that we don't understand, and especially from a place of abundance and comfort and security and safety, which are things that we as North Americans, including Jeff Bogue, worship, we want. Um, 
we would look at these Afghans or North Koreans or Chinese Christians and say, man, they must be miserable and uh, they, they, God must hate them. He must have turned their back on them. Hmm. And when you look at the scriptures and you watch what the disciples went through and what the early church went through and what Christ himself went through, you will not find that, that math. You will find the you are blessed in these things math. So this is an area like I have, me personally, I have to trust the scripture uh, and the, the mind of God, because I can't, I can't make it make sense in my own mm-hmm. mind, and I don't have any good answer outside of a biblical truth answer to bring to the table on this one. I think you're um, nailing this concept that I love. It all stems from trust of that relationship. So even back to your coach, the reason you were willing to hear his explanation is because you're like, you were almost dumbfounded. Like, why are you punished? Why are you my coach punishing me. And then when he explained himself, you're like, oh, well, I trust you. Okay, if that's what you're doing. And even more so, how can we do that with God? Where you're like, God, why would you let this happen? And you're like, he's like, I'm, I'm bringing something out of you that otherwise would not have happened. And if we have that trust, if we have that relationship, you're like, okay. Yeah, and, and, I, and I would even uh, go back to that story, Joe. I didn't trust my coach, hmm. so I quit. I, I, I played that year, but like I, I didn't do the work. I didn't go all in. I didn't take confidence in what he said. I never played college baseball. Um, I'm old now, but I could always throw the ball really hard. Sure. But I never did anything with it. Yep. And, and so I never got the reward. And looking back now as an old man, I'm like, I should have listened to my coach. <laughs> right, I should have listened to my coach because I actually love baseball, and uh, not a lot of people get to play in college. Period. It's like a privilege, and so like I don't think I I would. I'm confident I would have never gone pro. There's not like this big glorious ending to this whole thing. <laughs> I I just I <clears throat> look looking back now, I realized what I wasted because I didn't trust. Yeah, and it's hard for us to understand that eternity is going to be like that. It, th- there's no regret in heaven. I wanna be careful what I'm saying here. But I think there is gonna be an awareness of like, oh man, like the whole time, ah. And, and, and we think of that as regret. I don't think that's gonna be the way it's gonna play out or feel in heaven. But I do think we're gonna look back at the Afghan believer who doesn't forsake their faith Mm -hmm. and we're going to be like wow because we do that now with the Apostle Paul who was martyred the Apostle James who was martyred the Apostle Peter who was martyred that Jesus who gave his life Mm -hmm. and we're like wow right so it's it's a it's a bad it's like a poor incomplete thing but like it maybe it'll help you get your head around it a little bit but it's kind of like that and and it's usually it's almost always later you know that we're like ah uh, like like it's at retirement that you realize I should have listened to my dad when he said to save mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, it's at, it's it's when you have a flat tire that you're like, my mom told me I needed to get my tires checked. It, it's it's that kind of a thing, except it's it's bigger and more important. But it's it takes a spiritual mind, yeah, to make a spiritual investment and to trust that my reward is unseen. And so I keep. That's why I live by faith persecution God is doing something bigger than me and it's unseen Mm -hmm. and I'm I am admitting that I'm I I I hope I don't check up Mm -hmm. when I get persecuted like I would ask God for his grace and his courage in that moment because what what these folks are living through or dying for right now it, I, I'll be honest with you. It has driven me to prayer for them in a 
a unique way. I think because we're a 9-11 generation, mm. you know, I was young when 9-11 happened, but old enough, not young, I was 30. I was old enough to remember it in detail. And so I knew, especially in Afghanistan, I knew what the Taliban were doing and what we uh, stopped there. And so I, I know like where this is going and what that means. Cause this is, this is ISIS. This is, that's all one, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, Al Qaeda It's you know, it's all one thing kind of thing. Um, I, I'm just heartbroken and, and I have nothing to offer but prayer, uh, because I, I have a, a love and a concern for my brothers and sisters. And then a, I think an awareness that like, I'm like, if it was me, mm -hmm. I don't know if I had the backbone or not. I, I, I wish I, if I was being dishonest, I'd probably puff my chest up, but I'm just trying to be real vulnerable with this right now. I'm like, I, maybe I'm not being persecuted because God knows like Bogue would snap. But the world would look and be like, he's a pastor of a big church, da 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 God must be blessing him. And I'm like, that's not, the book says it backwards from that. Mm -hmm. you God's know? the one choosing to do those things for you. It's not because of. It's not my you know, reward, right. you know? And so I need to be faithful in what I'm doing. I also don't feel like I need to move to Afghanistan, you know, but. Right. I need to be faithful in what I'm doing, but I need to process everything biblically. And me sitting here in Ohio and my brothers and sisters being in Kabul, Afghanistan, what the scripture would tell me to do is share in their sufferings, pray. And if I have a way to do something, I should try to do it yeah. materially, yep. you know, kind of thing. The, the most recent stat I saw said that there are more than 340 million Christians suffering high levels of persecution. Yeah. Not somehow involved in people don't like it that I'm a Christian, but high levels. That's more people than that live in the United States. Yeah. Like, that's a lot of believers that are being called to this pathway. And you mentioned, like, we got to be praying for them. Jeff, if I had to guess, based off the conversations I've had in the past, if I say pray for something, a lot of people are like, other than God, please help them, which is a fine prayer, honestly. What are some ways that you might direct us to to pray for brothers and sisters going through these things? So I would look at the scriptures and, and like that number. What'd you say it was? Three hundred and forty million. Man, and I it, and that's more than you said. It's more than the U.S. I don't know the U.S. population. U.S. Last I saw, last I saw was like three thirty five. Okay. Were Heidi and I done having kids yet? <laughs> <laughs> How old is that stat? Uh, just a couple years. We've been contributing. Maybe a year. I don't know. The um, <laughs> I I would say this. Um, prayer is from your heart to God's heart, and what the Bible says is that the Spirit groans for us. So when I don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit says it for me. Hmm. I take a lot of comfort in that because I don't know words. You know, sure. I'm like, I don't know what to say. What I would do is I would look at the scriptures and what they prayed for in, in the scripture, they would often pray for courage. Uh, they would pray for comfort. They would even pray for relief. You know, you look at the psalmist and his pleas, you know, he'd say things like, you know, protect me from my enemies kind of a thing. And so protection, courage. I pray for faith. I would pray for a eternal perspective. I would pray for supernatural intervention. Like I believe in angels <laughs> and I believe that uh, I don't think angelic work has ceased. I, I don't think that my grandma is my guardian angel, but I do believe that God works supernaturally. Mm -hmm. And I think we should pray for that. Um, and, uh, and I think, I, what about this? If we ask God to be God and for our, our brothers and sisters under persecution to be godly mm -hmm. and have faith, seems like that would cover it, <laughs> you know, and, and then that God would do what, he, what he's going to do. But like I said, guys, pl don't ever get hung up on words. Like if you don't pray for something specific, God isn't going to do it. That The Spirit will hears you and, and, and take, you know, and, 
and that Jesus intercedes for us. The power of prayer, I'm not even sure I understand the power of prayer fully. I just know that God says to do it. Yeah. And we should be praying, and we should be praying as if we're the ones that that are uh, being persecuted and asking God to help in those ways. And that's Afghanistan. I should be praying for people in Haiti as if we're the ones who are homeless or can't find a loved one or our business collapsed and we don't know how we're going to eat. Mm-hmm. Like that happened to, uh, I read an article about that. Um, Korea, uh, North Korea, China, India, the United States, like th- this is everywhere. And when you hear about it or the Spirit of God brings it to your mind, unite with your with your spiritual family and, yep. and go before them. Well, those are uh, great encouragements on how to pray. And I would just add, if you're still listening to this and you feel almost like stubbornly unmoved, <laughs> I might pray like, God, help me see things the way that yeah, you do. It's good. Expand my heart. Give me the same compassion that you do. Because sometimes it's hard. I think especially I've met some people that have been really hardened through life themselves and they almost it almost calluses them to other people's pain, um, you know. And it's it's just God soften my heart, give me the same eyes that you do, give me the same um, heart and love for others that you're calling me to. Because we can't source that ourselves. Yeah, uh, that only comes from Christ within us. Well, um, thanks for listening. This is a, a big deal, and I pray that it drives all of us to a deeper prayer life and that we would ask God for ways in which we could um, intervene or help and continue to pray for those that are hurting, suffering, and being persecuted. If you have any questions that you'd like to be asked, maybe you have a follow-up to this or other topics, you can always submit those at bath.gracechurches.org slash mixed messages, and we'd love to get to those here in the coming weeks. If we can help you take any unique next steps, for instance, if you would like to uh, look for ways or have resources to be praying for different people groups around the world, or maybe you want to be involved in different missions efforts, we'd love to help you take those next steps. And of course, if you want more of what you're hearing, if you like this podcast, uh, we'd love it if you'd rate us, if you'd review us, if you'd subscribe and follow to continue to get the word out there as we continue to help each other through these mixed messages. If you're local in the area, we'd love to have you join us on uh, in person, excuse me. Uh, or if you're not in the area and you don't have a church family, feel free to join us online in the weekends as well. Well, thanks everyone for jumping in with us today as we continue to seek God's voice through all of the mixed messages around us. Catch you next time.